What? No fee music, no? Glasgow, now Chris the host Man, I make a little dinner while I'm fasting joke uh, Come to the yard, get it off your chest There's no hard feelings when you're rocking with the best Everything's Chris, everything's nice Throw a little sugar, add a little spice Ask school questions, cook a little rice Gamble like Vegas and throw a little dice Raise your glasses, make a toast Drop by Chris for a Sunday roast Or a taste of his mixology Get twisted and not off the Hennessy Now your belly's full, play a game of ball Gusto, he's coming from the old school No if Fox made these wise, no city questions, I told no lies. Everything Chris, everything Chris, everything Chris, everything, everything, everything Chris, everything Chris, everything Chris, everything, everything Chris. Live talks with Latrell L. D. Davis. L. D. in the building. Yeah. What's going on, man? Nothing much. Nothing much. Fresh. I've got the fresh high top, everything, but. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's high, bro. Like, yeah. That's the, that's the perks of when you've got a family member in the barbers, running a barber shop, you know what I mean? See that? Have you ever got a haircut? Oh, is it? <laughs> Can you cut hair yourself yet? Hmm. Oh, you're not learning. <laughs> I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, see, see. How you been anyway, man? No, I've been good. I've been good. How have you been? I've been great. I've been great, man. You know, he's working and also doing this. Um, these lives. So these have these have been really good, man. Really enjoying yeah. it. That man, how you been dealing with the quarantine and the uh, lockdown? I've been doing it all right. I've just been going to the park with my dad and playing basketball, to be honest. I'm going oh, to... really? Yeah, you give me your dad work now. It's a bit of both. Some, yeah. some days he's having a good day giving me work, some days I'm giving him work. So... Uh, these days I've improved. It's <laughs> gonna get to the day where he's gonna realize he can't do it no more now. Is that what you mean? Yeah, <laughs> that day's gonna come, man. All right, right, right. That's cool, man. So, yeah, man. So, let the people know, man. Where did you grow up? Well, Leeds. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. You've grown up, born and bred in Leeds, too. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's good. That's good. And I know you've been into basketball from a young age. Young. So, like, you've been, you've been dribbling the ball since you was born. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is it that got you into? Who is it and what is it that got you into basketball? I think when I was young, I was just because obviously my mum and dad played. I was just around basketball, so I just basically picked it up. Okay, and what made you choose that path? Obviously, you know they probably didn't force you on you. So, what is it that made you choose it? More their influence of them I just, that made you. I just huh? always had basketball in my hands, really. I know, man. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I just it, started to like it, and he used to be practicing a lot. I remember he used to be um, used to be um. At the games, like Leeds Carnegie games. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> my mum was <laughs> for them, so I was just there. Yeah, yeah your, your mum used to be taking a you have the ball and at half time I was on the court. End of the game, <laughs> I was trying to get them shots out. That was that's that was cool. But I, I love that man because you had that passion from yeah. from young. What's made you keep that passion on for so long, man? What? Well, well, my parents. Uh, will support me a lot and I've got people who believe in me so it's just pushing me to keep going really and I know that I can get better when I keep going so and I think I've got potential to make it far so it's just pushing me bro at your age right now you know what I mean the sky's the limit for you man so keep it going I say uh, there's a there's one thing you have read or I see in many young 15 year olds there's a lot of talented people but you have a killer instinct where does that come from at a young age? You have a killer instinct that I can see it and I can feel it every time I watch you play. Like, where does that come from? I don't know. I'm just competitive. I don't really want to lose. Like, yeah, I go into a game thinking that I want to win. I don't want to come out of the game. Oh, oh, um, I want a top score. I want this. I just, like, want to win. I'll do what I can to make the team win if you get what I mean. Like, I know. I can see it in you, man. You just... just <laughs> The, the killer mentality, man, is there. So I hope you keep it going. So, like, talk us through your first, like, basketball experience. So, you know, 
your first like competitive and most um, first organized basketball. That's it. Cool. I was playing under thirteens and I was seven. And what? You seven I, playing under thirteens? Yeah. Damn. Well, well, I remember one game where you burst like Manchester Magic and we lost a hundred and fifty-eight ten, and it was just well. In my first game, first game was against Manchester Magic and. I kept They're getting tough, the ball taken from me every time. So after I just went to my mum and said, Mum, I'm working on my handles. No one's taking the ball off me anymore. So I started working on stuff and then it got harder and harder. And then just, yeah, like, it's just, like, so then, I'm playing with, like, Vassia and Bailey and stuff like that. So it was just, it was, it was a good team. So that, um, that when you were playing uh, age seven, what team was that? Was that the Yorkshire basketball team? That was, was Leeds. That? that was just Leeds. Yeah. Leeds Carnegie. Yeah. Or fourth. Carnegie. So, Carnegie back so talk us through that whole time being at Leeds Carnegie, man. Like, what was it like? The coaches, the culture, you know, the team you played with. What, and what is the thing you took from that? Lessons you learned from that? Well, to be honest, they taught me a lot. Like, I got a lot of well skills from there. Um, they helped me progress my game. And there was, like, obviously, they hosted, like, mini tournaments so we could test our skills against other teams, like, such as, like, Bradford and York and stuff. And it was all right, but then Kiwi was just the better option because with everything going on with Leeds, then Kiwi yeah. was just the better option. And I wanted to play for them because it it's a good school. It's got probably better coaching and just, yeah, so... Okay, so all right then. Um, so that 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 QE then you mentioned it. <clears throat> Talk us through that. You know, getting into QE. You know, what was your thoughts before going to QE, and what is it that made you choose QE? Well, I think. Well, Elijah went the year before. Yeah. So, and I like obviously one of the coaches there was my Yorkshire coach. So okay. like. They kind of picked me up from that and Elijah was telling me to go. And it was the better option because they had education plus a good basketball, like good basketball standards. Okay. So it was just... And like, they finished school early as well, like June time. So which like kind of breaks up at the same time as America. So therefore I could potentially, if I want to play AU or go over to America to play in basketball tournaments. So. Okay. So is it like um is QE like an academy there? Yeah, basically. Well there's well it's got like a young school our age and uh sixth form. So it's and, just a... and do you have to travel, do you commute to Leeds to York or do you stay in York or um I travel but I share a list with Elijah. Like me his his parents and my parents, we both share a list, so it just kinda of works out really. Okay, okay, that's that's all right then. That's not too bad then. I, I guess. So I know you mentioned Elijah. I have it. I've got him on later on about yeah, straight off news. <laughs> um, so talk about your relationship with Elijah, man. How did that start, and what is it like up until now? What's he been like? Well, in Leeds, we were, like we we're the young ones on the team at one point, and then there was a season where all the olders left, and me and Elijah were just there and. Our bond, like, we just killed that season. But obviously, I got injured during that season. So, well, do we had a season before that, but like, yeah, yeah. Was this in Leeds, yeah? Yeah. And yeah. then we had a season after, and I got injured. And then I came back for a game, but we lost by uh, someone hitting a buzzer beater in overtime. Yeah, yeah. And okay, it was just okay. like our bond. And then I think. Like, one or two years there, he went to Kiwi. So then I didn't have him for a season, then I went to Kiwi. And, like, our chemistry is just better than it was before, to be honest. Even though we played each okay. other longer, it's just, like... Because we both know each other's game so well, that it's just easy to bond. And... Definitely, definitely. What? So was it like... Did he kind of, like, influence you to go Kiwi, or did you want to go Kiwi because of, of because Elijah was there? Was it a bit of both? I knew about I knew about Q before and it was a good school because obviously 
well, I knew people who went there before, like Isley and stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he did kind of influence me because he was doing good and he was telling me a lot about the school. So it seemed like a good option. So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. And then that, obviously, in the, the relationship in terms of you two making each other better, what's that been like? Is it like you competitive with each other in practice? Yeah, they're training, together, always right? competitive. We might have fallen out a couple of times in training, but it's just because we're both competitive. It happens, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, we like we just try to get, like, in training sessions, we just try and get into each other's head and try to put each other <laughs> off the game. Just like, it's just competitive. And then, so what is it that when you two are the same team in training? What's that? Are they, or do they ever put you two on the same team in training? We've been on the same team before. Like, it's, it can go both ways. People can <laughs> want to beat us or just don't really play as hard. They don't play as hard because you two are on the same team? Sometimes. And then obviously coaches put us onto different teams. But mostly we're on different teams, to be honest. Okay, okay. And what's the coaching staff been at like at QE, man? How, how have they helped you develop? Like, they've helped me develop a lot. Well, Coach Metcalf and my shots got a lot better. My form's gone better because everyone used to go on to me about my form. Um, <laughs> he helped my form a lot. And, well, I reckon it showed in my England versus Wales game in the Tri Nation tournament. Oh, um, yeah. So how was your form before then? It wasn't the best. Like obviously it's still going in, but it just wasn't the best. <laughs> so. No man, that's good, man. You know what I mean? You know, the form that that you're getting better at. You know what I mean? So yeah. I remember you used to drive a lot. You was really you really good at getting to the basket. Yeah, I I can still get to the basket. But yeah, if I'm open and someone's sagging off too much and I shoot, if they come up too close, I'll drive. That must, that's mad now. So now it's like you're at that stage now where you're, you're, you're double threat. So if they want to go get up on you, yeah, just pull up yeah. on, on two dribbles and pull up. It's just reading the game, to be honest. No, nah, that, that's, def that's definitely, that's great, man. Is that, is that something you improved on as well, learn to read the game more? As opposed, say, as opposed to what you were playing like in Yorkshire up, up until now, what biggest difference have you seen in your game? Whoa. Some of the shots, like some of the shots I'm taking, aren't as bad as before. <laughs> like I just, well, it's just, yeah, like because people are older that I'm playing with, so they're kind of more experienced, so they know what to do in certain situations. So it's easier yeah. to like flow, like just the flow of the game is just easier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is it um so are you so you're not playing no under sixteen at all? It's a straight under eighteen, right? Yeah, under eighteens and nineteens. Under under eighteens and nineteens. Okay, okay. So tell us the challenges you experienced in both of those, eight, eight, under eighteens and nineteens. Well, eighteens is like some of the competitions. Some teams in 19s are better than some teams in 18s, and some teams in 18s are better than 19s. So it's just like a mix of both, really. Like, we've got Manchester Magic and Maya Skull in 18s. Yeah, yeah. And, like, in ABL, we finished first in our seed in ABL. We had, he was probably our hardest team. Wait. Okay. Yeah. We lost to, like, Stoke. Stoke um, on Nottingham and I can't remember who else. But yeah, it's like it's just bigger bodies and stuff, but it's mm, it's not it's not really that hard to be honest. Yeah, like, yeah. I thought it would be like a massive, massive step. It's like it's just it's a little it's yeah. a little up upgrade from yeah. not much different. I heard it. Under 18 and under 19, not much. If it was like under 16, under 18, it'd be different. Yeah. Because I had a, I just had Shaq on from Birmingham, a place for West mm -hmm. Brom. He just told me the difference between 18s, under 16, under 18s, a complete different. Yeah. So I'm guessing, you know, not that much difference with that one. So backtrack a little bit. You know, you played for England. Mm -hmm. you know, and you played from under 13 through to under 18. 
talk us through that, how you got into the team, talk us through the, the, the tryouts and then, you know, some of the competition you had playing in England. Well, I think it started from some of the coaches knowing me and from regionals. I kind of got spotted. Then one year I got asked to go to England trials. Yeah. And then this was for under-14s, which was last year. But then they made me, my friend Tyrese, and my friend F.A. play under-15 England. Yeah. With, like, Louis Tucker and everyone. And we played that, and we went to Paris. And we went to Copenhagen. The first team we played, we played the team teams that won were in the hall yeah, yeah. we played Serbia and then we played Poland like they were good teams like they've probably been training for a long time together and okay. they were just a good well rounded team they had some tall players and just yeah, yeah. it was a good team so, so who was the toughest team that you, 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 know, you faced you reckon you faced it during um, England that England probably, England. probably Serbia all right, give us some uh, give us some tips on what they do, you know. Like, what is it they do that makes them tough? They've just got very good IQ. I could imagine, though. And I could imagine they do have it from a young age, innit? They've like, got good IQ. Like, their point guard was nice, but, like, he was guardable. But, like, yeah. it was just... They just know what to do in certain situations, like whether to pull up, shoe, shoe, like drive, like it's just, or oh, it's just. I like a lot of their vision was good as well. So, and they, and they see the court very well, and they read. Yeah. And, and what, did you learn anything from playing against them? What kind of things did you learn from them? Is it more as well? well I reckon I learned a lot, and the whole team learned a lot because we were like, oh, if we're gonna have chance to do well in this role, we need to play 10 times harder. And just so, it just kind of gave us a boost. But we had Poland next. He came second in the tournament, so. Came yeah, second? Like, Poland came second. Okay. And, yeah, like, we, I think we lost to them by more than we did to Serbia. But, like, I reckon they were easier to play against. Because yeah. Serbia, made, they made you have to think a lot more, innit? Yeah, they were easy. Poland were easier to play against. I reckon we could have had Poland if, like, we gelled more as a team before. Yeah, yeah. That's that. Well, you know what I mean? It's an experience, so you learn something yeah. from it. And then when we went to team. Copenhagen, like, we all played well as a team. I got injured in Copenhagen and I couldn't play. Um, I got injured in one game and I couldn't play the other two or three. And we reversed the team that won. This was to get into the finals. But we lost by four points, but I didn't play at all. I was injured. So, What injury did you sustain? Um, it was in my Achilles. Like I had fluid in there because I was just in Norway and we were losing. I came on, hit two threes. And like I was just went and drove to the paint and like they all just put their feet there and I landed on their foot and then it was just hurting from there. Oh, and I just felt like something go shoot up in my um, calf and everything and it was just... Yeah, okay. flipping hell, man. But <laughs> glad to see you're better now. So yeah, you know you're you're doing good in that. So you know, um, let's backtrack a bit again. And so after England now, so where did you go after England? Is that where you went straight to QE after England? Yeah, I was in QE after England. Yeah, you know when you played in England, you played with a um, who did you play with? Another kid from Birmingham. Uh, he was MVP in Den Camp. Yeah, Ty. Ty, yeah, what was that like playing with him, man? I've seen him play before. Sure. He has very I've good known, IQ, I've very known good vision. I've, yeah? known from, I've known him from like when we were little because of under 11 minis back in the day. So, like, yeah, like we've always versed each other, and it was just, oh, it was like actually our first time playing with each other. So, it was just a good experience. Like, we gelled well because obviously we know each other and it was just a good experience playing together. That's good, man. I like that. Because I know you, you've you had some battles, you two, man, where... Yeah, we always we always have to come <laughs> up against each other. Apart what are those from... battles... Go, what are those battles like, man? Talk us through some of those, man. Well, it's just... 
I don't think we really we don't really guard each other because there's someone on our on our team who guards him. I've had to guard him before. His his crafty is shifty. Um, <laughs> He caught me once. I'll give him that. He caught me once. I didn't drop, but yeah. I was kind of stumbling. But I recovered. I recovered. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah like he's a, he's a very good player. He's a nice player. He um, he's got good IQ. He can shoot. He can drive. Like he's a very good player. The battles have been good. Like they've been competitive. Like sometimes our team wins. Sometimes his team wins. It's just back and forth. That's good, yeah. man. And I noticed as well. Elijah with Den Camp, was that something you was planning to do as well? Go Den Camp, or have you been selected yet? Or uh, I don't know because I think you have to put an application and people put you forward. I I want to go to Den Camp, and yeah, I want to go though. Hopefully, oh, it'll yeah. be good to see you there. Definitely, man. I de definitely think you can definitely hang with those guys at Den Camp. So hopefully, it would be good to see you there. Yeah. And definitely see you at Pro Classic because I definitely that that'll be another thing to see you there. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of competition there. Yeah, you know, a lot. Seeing the things that you're doing. In terms of, so I know you're from Leeds. In terms of when I grew up in Leeds, I knew in Leeds there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of great, a lot of good ball players there. But I've noticed what separates them a lot from others is some of them sometimes in Leeds they ain't got the, the let's say what's the right word the heart that most of them have. But for some reason, you seem to be a lot different from most Leeds players that I have. What is it that separates you a lot from other Leeds players? Yeah, what did you say they don't have again? A lot of, most of them, they're great, but they don't have that heart. Do you know what I mean? No. Or that that, that uh, killer drive. Like, a lot of them, are they good. You know what I mean? Yeah. What is it that separates you from them? Well, just, like I said, it's just, I'm just really competitive. Like, I just want to win. And yeah, yeah. Like, and then, if there's someone on another team that I know is a scorer, I'll say I've got them. Like, yeah. I'll make it my like goal to try not let them score, so like we have a chance to win. Because obviously, I is a good scorer, so if I get tired from playing defense, I know he can handle it on the offensive side. Definitely. It's just, and then yeah, sometimes it switches. He guards it, and it's just. Like, it was, it was hard for teams to guard as well because, like, if they were focused on Elijah, then I would go off. Then they'll focus on me that Elijah would go off. It's just... It's, no, that's <laughs> crazy because I'm looking at you lot now at, um, at QE and you two in that thing, I've, I'm, I'm guessing I saw in someone's status in high school across the nation, <laughs> you two are top three, one and three, right? <laughs> like, like... That that's amazing. Like, how does that you know I mean? How does that make you feel to be that uh, the one and three? And you know, what's it like going into games, man? Obviously, you don't, your mindset ain't scoring, but what's your mindset going into games like, knowing that you throw like the top three? Is there anything you think you think about it too much, or you just just take just, it as it comes? I just play my game. If I can, if I got an opportunity to score, then I would take it. Like I just. It doesn't change anything because teams will probably look out more for us, but like we can read what they're doing because we've been playing the game for so long. Yeah. Like it's kind of readable of what they'll do. And our coach, obviously, he's a player as well. He's got good IQ. So he knows, like, he says some plays to do depend, yeah. depending on the way they're guarding. Oh, okay, and okay. It works most of the time, to be honest. Right. Not if it works, it works. Do you get double team much as well? Um, I don't really get double teams as much because we had some good. We had some good bigs, and we had a shooter. He played for Wales as well. Oh, okay, played for Wales. Wales. Yeah, he played for Wales. So, like, he could shoot. So it was like they couldn't really double team. Like they would put, like they would put a lot inside so we don't drive, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we had a lot of players for all of that stuff, anyway. So, was... um, so back to your parents, man. What kind of influence have they been on in your life, and how have they motivated you so far in your career? Oh, well, they've been good. Like they, because obviously they watch a lot of my games. They've been telling me what I need to do in certain places and that to improve my game. And 
to being really supportive as well. Like, it's not just basketball that's supportive, and it's supportive with everything, like, keeping my schoolwork up and everything, so, so I've got more options. It's just, yeah. Okay. Very supportive. What's your mum? I know your mum's been very supportive uh, as well. Yeah. As well as that, what's your mum's support like with you? Like she's been very. I see she she's been at nearly every game. She takes you to every game. Yeah, I've, I've seen her Instagram. She's screaming on the sideline. Yes, mum. I hear you screaming on them sidelines. She's probably in here now. <laughs> How's your mum's support been for you? It's been very good. Well, that's another thing that's kept me going as well. Because, well, to be honest, like, I want to make it far as possible so, like, I can repay her for all the stuff that, like, she's done for me and all the time she's dedicated to me. Facts, but Yeah, she's made a lot of sacrifices. Yeah, that, a lot. So, no. she, yeah. And then, and also with your dad, I know your dad has been sub- mad, mad supportive as well. He's been really supportive. How has his support been for you as well? Like, his support's like, been... Like, it's a different approach to your mum's, isn't it? Yeah, he's been... Well, during quarantine, he's been getting me out of the house, keeping my fitness up, playing basketball with me, just working on different parts of my game, everything. It's just like, yeah, they're really supportive with everything that I do. Dad, and your dad. Anything your dad, you learnt from your dad? For both, what's it? What is it you learned from both your mum and your dad uh, going along in your career? A lot of stuff, to be honest. Like, well, obviously, I've got the killer instinct. That's from both of them. That was just in their yeah, heart yeah. talk because my dad always wanted to win. My mum always wanted to win. It's really competitive. Um, my dad's taught me some moves, like if I get into different scenarios and kind of what stuff to do. My mum's, like, taught me, well, different parts of my game and like telling me what I should do then and like it's just yeah it's just yeah cool. yeah helping a lot that's good man that's good so going forward now what is your goals what is it you want to be doing after QE probably well going to America a good school in America getting more exposure and probably well really trying to make it to the top to be honest definitely definitely <laughs> Guys, a limit, man. It's there for you, but then yeah. you're not even in your last year of school yet. So, you know, yeah, no. so the sky is the limit for you, man. We're supporting you so much. So, yeah. you've got a chance to put leads on the map, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And, and Chapel Town, shout them out. So, every guest I have on here, I always ask them this question to get their opinion on it. What's your views on the British basketball? and the BBO, what are the things that you think that are working, but what do you think they need to work on more? Um, it used to be a big, big thing, but I don't. I feel like it's died down a lot recently. It's not really up there as much. Like, everyone always used to, oh, BBO, BBO, like, everyone used to always talk about it, but I don't really... Yeah hear about it as much as more. It might be because Leeds is not in BBL anymore, I don't think. Yeah, I heard that. But, like, would... it's just... Yeah. yeah go on. They just... Well... I don't know. They just need to get their awareness kind of back up, if you get what I mean. Like, I don't really hear of it much, to be honest. And I think that's the sad part as well. That we yeah. just, you know, I've spoken about this on all of my shows. It's the fact that it's the marketing, you're not really hearing much about it, and yeah. people like yourself are not hearing much, so you don't even know who's in the league. Like, yeah. and it's, a, it's a bit sad because it's it, like, for me, how does it, for me to, because it's something I want to know for myself, as a, a young player coming up, how does it make you feel knowing that, you know, you're not hearing much about British basketball and that's something in your country? As, and how does it make you feel like that you're not knowing much, even though you feel you should be knowing much? Well, is is kind of upsetting because everything is America, America, America. Yeah, yeah. Like people sort of used to know BBL, but now people don't really think. Okay. In America, 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 people don't really hear about anything British no more. It's like kind of just needs to be put back on the map if you. Yeah, you know I mean, definitely. 
I do feel it for you, though, because it's like the country and the world needs to know that there are players here, like players here like yourself. And, you know what I mean? There's a lot of players like yourself coming up. There's so many young young talent coming up. And it's all about developing it. And I, and I think it's really important. Do you know what I mean? Because the last thing we want to see is someone great talent like yourself, other than maybe going to NBA, going elsewhere. We'd, lo- we'd love to see our great homegrown talent get developed here and get played at a high level here as well. So yeah, that does upset me a little bit. But well, hopefully things may change, you know. Yeah, it may. It may. It's got time. It's got time, man. Definitely, definitely. And this is one of the things I do, one of the reasons why I do this. So, definitely. Um, so, there's another thing I always ask. So, what's your favorite pre game meal, favorite post game meal? That's tough. <laughs> um, I don't know if it changes, but I just get food down me. <laughs> 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 whatever's yeah, being cooked really <laughs> just, oh is it so whatever mom's cooking hey mommy you better be cooking that good food you know <laughs> it's beautiful it's nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's um, dope man. and post game meal same thing just whatever you could get down you yeah to be honest it's ready it's just well food is food really it's just as long as I like it then I'll eat it to be honest with you. All right. Be careful though, man. Make sure it's doing good for your body as well. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> I need to balance it out too. So. Don't, don't, don't eat too much pizzas and chips, man. You know, it's... No, no, no. I don't even like <laughs> chips. <laughs> They're good, bro. Good. Keep it that way. Uh, um, I have these, uh, I always do this with all my guests, hotspot questions. So the two, three part questions. The first part is a player you love playing with a player you love playing against and a funny opponent. No, a funny teammate. A player I like playing with, probably. Ty. Who? Uh, Tyrese, Lazy, because we get on well. The, uh, oh, from Birmingham. Tiny T, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what was the second one? A player you love, play, you love playing against. Against. Oof. Um, I don't really have a player. I've got a team. Oh, if you want to use a team, you can go to a team. Manchester Magic. <laughs> Give us the reasons behind that, man. Just, it's always competitive because we're like, because like, we're always at the top two teams and we know about each other, so it's just always competitive, really. What is it like going into that game, though? Is that the two top teams and you know, they know you're the top Just, team. we need to win. <laughs> we need to win. <laughs> just, yeah. Like, get bragging rights in that. Everyone trying to get into each other's heads, everything. It's just, just like... I, I just, love it. Yeah. That sounds dope, man. I love it. And then I said a funny teammate. Um, I like it, John. <laughs> He just, he's just, he always comes up with a, either the weirdest stuff or just dances in the change rooms, but he can't dance. He does. He can't. Like he's the stiffest person I've probably ever seen. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, stiffest person, you know? Damn it. Right. That's funny, man. Um. Then the next, the next two three part questions is um, a player. He said, "I can dance, man." <laughs> it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> uh, a player you loved, um, a player you didn't like playing with. So they're not someone. They don't have to be someone you don't like. You might just not like play with them. You might have a friend you don't like playing with. A player you didn't like playing against. A kryptonite, and a player, a funny opponent. Um, a player that I didn't like playing with. I don't really know. <laughs> I just try to bond with the whole team. Fair enough. If there's no one you can think of, I get that. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough. That's a that's a killer right there. The man ain't got time to look for it. <laughs> I like. Uh, it. A player you did like playing against, a kryptonite, someone who used this. Um, 
again, it was kind of a team. Like, oh. Back then, it was Manchester because, oh, well, Manchester slash London United because when I versed London United in the under tour tournament, they put four players on me. Like, I couldn't, oh. I could, like, I couldn't do anything. And Manchester just getting a zone and just double team that like, I used to. <laughs> just, like, I just hated playing against it. <laughs> Um, but did they do? Did they do the boxer one on you? Yeah, sometimes, and then they had like two people on me. Sometimes. Oh, that! <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. So this, oh uh, man, boxer one. I hate. Uh, I that's never been done to me. So <laughs> I, I've, I've done it to other players, but I've never never been done to me. Boxer one is a horrible. That's a horrible strategy, right? And then I said a funny opponent. Um, probably. Who have I asked? I don't know. Wait. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Again, I can't really say a player would probably be a team, but it was like back, like a couple of years ago. Like it was probably Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham, because <laughs> we got along with the like I knew the parents and I knew the players, and we just like the game was heated, but it was just funny at the same time. <laughs> like the parents would cheer for us if we did something, and would cheer like it was just back and forth. It was just, funny. <laughs> it was just always. <laughs> But it's all good. It was one of those. Um, it was all good fun, that kind of thing. Like, yeah, competitive, but it was fun. As where well, like Manchester Magic was probably just competitive because it's like you like you got to win as well. Yeah, um, you, like you could just have fun with them when you're competing. Oh, that's dope, man. That's dope, man. All right, man. Um, anyone else? Why we've got the troll here? Have they got any questions for the troll? And also, I did one Instagram. Trey Ball, is it Trey Ball? No, uh, I'll type it, I'll type it. Yeah, yeah t- t- uh, Trail B Ball. You can pin it. Tra- yeah, Trail B Ball, there we go, there we go. There, there, he's, he's put his Instagram there, there we go. Pin that for everyone. And also, Latrell, do you have any questions for myself while I'm on here? Um. What made you want to start doing the Instagram lives? Um, good question. Um, so first of all, I've been um in production doing my own show. Yeah. So I've I've done a few episodes. So before, prior to that, I did three episodes, and then the quarantine uh, uh quarantine happened. So I was talking to my team, and they said, you know, try and do some lives. So I said, okay, I'll see what happens, and then. I'm gonna go through, go forward from there, and then it's been a good reception. It's been a good, better yeah. turnout than I expected it to be. I didn't really expect it to be where people kind of liked what I, what I was doing. So a lot of people have been liking it. And since then, a lot of people have been motivated me to do it. So I just said, you know, let me do, let me just start doing these lives. And the main thing, what made me want to do these lives, because like you mentioned before, no one don't know about basketball. So yeah. I, I figured if I start doing these lives with more basketball players from England. The more the professionals and some of the up and comings, which is why I did this special one for with three of you guys up and coming. It was to start letting people know that look, there's basketball, there is basketball here, it exists, and we've got these players that play, and we've got these that are coming up. So yeah. it's a mainly, mainly I just thought I'll create, mainly it's me creating a platform for you guys to, to be known and you know to use it when you can. That, so that is the main reason I. That's the main reason I did these lives. So I've got the show coming up soon. There's yeah. a promo. Got a promo for it coming out soon. So watch out for that. And then yeah, I've got one. I've got three episodes. But after after I put those out, I'm going to be looking to get more people on. So definitely will get yourself on. In, in during time as well, we planned to get you on last time, remember? But because of this happened, didn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know. Yeah, man. So that's why I'm doing this, man. And yeah. plus, I enjoy this. It's, it's, it's a good way for for people to to, to talk and interact. It's about yeah. getting, getting the fans to interact with the players. So that's the main thing. 
Anyone else got any questions for the trail? I got a question for you. Who do you think the best Double. BBL player is? Best BBL player? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, Justin Robinson. Justin Robinson, two-time MVP. Turned the franchise around. London Lions was, wasn't really known. That well, well, they were known, but they weren't doing well until he came along. Yeah. And, and they won the league for the first time in what twenty years. The London team won the league for the first time in twenty years. So you got, got to give him his props. Who do you reckon is the best BBL player? Well, I have to say one of my role models is probably Jamal Anderson. Oh right, right. Jamal's so, nice. Yeah, it's very. I, I like Jamal, man. He. He's a good one because he came up. Um, he didn't go. To, he didn't take the American route. He stayed in this UK, in it. So yeah, he did really well. I think so he went out to Australia like last year or the year before. Okay, and then he went to Australia. Yeah, he did. All oh, right, that's a good league out there. Good and league out there. Yeah, I think he came back. And then, yeah. So what about um, NBA, who's a, who's an NBA player you've watched a lot? Well. It was KD, but he's injured. But yeah, you had the KD. You still, still got the KD top. Huh? Um, you still got your KD top. I've got, I've got, I've got all the ones from when I was younger, but I still, yeah. I don't really have the new ones. It's just, yeah, yeah. Who's your favorite so, NBA player of all time or right now? Right now. Ooh, difficult, man. There's a few. I like Joel, Joel Embiid, but he can be lazy, but he's... I like Joel Embiid because he's very versatile. Embiid's really good. Um, who's another player I like? Ooh, I had someone in my head. He's gone now. Joel Embiid's one of my... Um, Clay Thompson because he's a shooter, man. Yeah, he's a nice I, I, I like my shooters, man. Like, and he can play defense, so... <laughs> no, I like Rashid. Obviously, Steph is probably the better player, but I like I like Clay Thompson, man. Yeah. All right. No, no one got no questions. Jeez, that wasn't quite today. No questions for the trail. What's your plans for today, then? You're gonna chill out. Got more working out. Well, I'm. Yeah. My phone was on ten percent, so it came up. Um, I'm at my dad, so I'm probably, yeah, probably just some family time, to be honest. I hear that, man. I hear that, bro. Yeah, man. All right, man. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything, everything. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything, everything Chris. Chris G, host of Everything Chris. Hope you liked that video. If you did, click that like button. Also, leave a comment. And also, if you want to see more, click that subscribe button to get a notification where we upload new content every single time. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you stay tuned for some more. And also, as you know with me, everything's always Chris.